Can you tell me exactly how many warehouses exist? The governor at her press conference spoke about Guaynabo, Ponce, but I saw a report that you were quoted as saying there may be up to close to a dozen. Can you clarify that? Well, there are seven warehouses in Puerto Rico. Two of them are the uh, warehouses that uh, we have mentioned that belong to the state. Uh, one in uh, Ponce, one in Guaynabo. The other five that are located in Ponce, Calle, Ceiba, Bayamón, and Caguas, they are federal warehouses administered uh, by FEMA. Understood. Thank you. Can you tell me the aid that is in those warehouses that the state owns, Guaynabo Welcome and Ponce? Me. Was that aid, and forgive me, everyone, I just landed in Richmond, Virginia, so what you're hearing is the intercom uh, here at the airport. General, can you tell me the two state-owned warehouses, the aid that is inside of them, where did that aid come from? The aid, uh, there is no inventory, David. The one thing that we realized that uh, when uh, the governor assigned me to, to the state emergency management agency, I request a copy of the inventories, so there is no inventory, so there is no way that I can tell you the precedent uh, where those uh, uh, goods and commodities came from. I just know they are there, so we are conducting that full inventory, and certainly the order is to distribute that to the people in need. General, does it appear that some of the aid has been there since Hurricane Maria or shortly thereafter? That's the appearance that it, it seems that they were the, probably donations. They are the washer, dryers, they are pampers and the commodities, uh, first necessity for the people. So it seems that they might be some donations that the agency acquired after Maria or the remaining uh, uh, commodities that were at the different uh, locations uh, after Maria uh, closed operations. General, why weren't those commodities distributed in the immediate aftermath of the earthquakes? That's a good question, David. And I have to be honest with you, I don't really know why. Uh, apparently, uh, they were kept in secret and the uh, governor uh, was always told that the uh, commodities were distributed properly and accordingly to the, uh, to the contingency plan. So. Uh, it was a lack of uh, uh, information being provided to the governor, and sometimes uh, uh, she was not properly informed of the uh, of the uh, of all these commodities being warehouses uh, at these warehouses. Did you, sir, know the existence of these warehouses before all this went down? Did you know that they existed? No, I don't. No, you I did. don't. Okay. I know very well the contingency plan of the Puerto Rico National Guard. And as uh, you know, I was the dual status commander in charge of the uh, DOD forces here in Puerto Rico uh, for about 90 days after Maria. Uh, so I was well acquainted with the regional distribution points, but I didn't know the existence of these two warehouses. When I look at the, uh, at the contracts uh, of these two warehouses, they were agreed after Maria. So... After completing the uh, emergency operations after Maria, it looks like the agency realized that there were some commodities uh, left over and some donations after the uh, Maria hurricane, and they decided to establish a contract and to warehouse these commodities in these two locations. So the state was paying, do you know how much money they were paying monthly to house all this? Uh, I have the contracts in front of me. Uh, I can give you the details. I believe one of the warehouses is uh, 41,000 square feet, and the other one is 29.7 20, uh, thousand square feet. Uh, I see the total of the contract, but I have to be honest with you. I don't know if it is annual or the total of the contract since uh, 2018. One was uh, started on June 21st, uh, 2018, and the other one in April 2019. Uh, I can certainly provide you more details. I just see the total, but How I much? cannot. What is uh, the total, total for, the, uh, for the one started in 2018, 41,000 square feet? We're talking about uh, $622,000. That's the total amount of this contract, but I'm not sure and I, I don't want to give you a, 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 an estimate if it is annual or 
for the total of years uh, since uh, June 2018. The other one is 268,000 uh, for the 29.7 uh, uh, thousand square feet uh, that started in uh, in four, in uh, April 4, 2019. And the smaller warehouse uh, is that the Ponce one or the or the uh, the smaller warehouse is the one in Guaynabo, David. Guaynabo, okay. Guaynabo. General, have you had a chance to walk inside of both the Guaynabo and the Ponce one? No, not at all. Uh, this is the first day uh, I'm here at the agency. So uh, as a new uh, head of the uh, agency, I requested a, a report from each one of the uh, directorates, uh, personnel, budgeting, and all that. And then I went over the operations uh, to familiarize myself with the operations of the agency. Uh, so I will go out tomorrow and personally go but I have seen videos of the warehouse and uh, many commodities, uh, pampers and uh, uh, milk uh, for the kids, uh, washer, dryers. Uh, I have seen the generators, that type of equipment and that type of commodities. Understood. I only have a couple more questions for you. On the contract, whose name is signed? What government official signs to agree to the contract? These two warehouses are between the uh, management emergency, uh, the uh, Puerto Rico Emergency Management Agency, and it's with another state uh, agency. Uh, I can translate it. Uh, there is an agency uh, uh, for commerce, for commerce and exportation. That's the name of the agency, and the uh, and the name was the. Uh, uh, deputy director for the agency in this case was uh, Carlos Mercado from that agency and from my ma uh, emergency management was Carlos Acevedo. So I just want to make sure I'm understanding you correctly. One agency was paying another state agency more than a half a million dollars to rent space. Is that correct? That's what I see in first look at the contract. I can give you more details into it and again uh, I don't know the amount that I just gave you is for the total of the three year contract uh, because I've seen that they, uh, they run from 2018 to 2021. So uh, I have to look more into the uh, contract. The one in uh, for the, uh, the one in Ponza is a two uh, three year contract from 2018 to 2021 for the total amount of uh, 623. 622, so I estimate it's somewhere about 200 plus uh, per year, David. Uh, the other one, so you think it's 200,000 a year? Yes, yes, David. That's what I seen on the cell express sheet that I'm looking. And the, uh, and the other one uh, is from uh, 2019 to, uh, to 2021 for yep. 268, so it's approximately 130,000 per year. 130. Okay. General, yeah. is it odd to you that a state agency is paying $130,000 a year to another state agency to, 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 to rent a building? I have to be frank with you, David. Uh, as a U.S. Army uh, general, we don't rent uh, buildings from other agencies. So I, I'm, I'm learning as we go how the uh, state government work, to be honest with you. I know okay. there are Seems there like a waste of taxpayer There's dollars. A state agency that owns buildings, right? Uh, uh, they usually public buildings. Uh, the uh, relationship, the contract relationships, uh, I'm not well acquainted of that relationship. It almost seems like a waste of taxpayer dollars. I'm not a, I'm not an expert, but if if the state owns the building and another state agency is going to use the building. You're making money. You're, you're paying money to make it back to, to give it to yourself. I, I don't know. It doesn't. I, I gotta. I gotta see if I can get some more information on that. Um, I certainly will look into it, David. To be yes, sir. Friends.